Hello, everyone. I'm joined here with Mark Harris, president of PNC Machine Services. Mark, first off, thank you a lot for having me over here. You're welcome. It's been mm -hmm. fantastic. I'm bringing all the vendors together. So I think what our audience is really excited to hear about is what's new and exciting in this industry. Very glad. But uh, I can go through a couple of quick little things. Yeah. Um, what's new and hot off the press and basically is the new um, feature recognition software for actually programming and routines online. So it's pretty amazing. It actually finds the features from the solid and actually put tool path to it and puts the piece to it. And then we can simulate it. If you can see on the machine, whatever machine we're running. So we can actually hook up to these machines and run the same thing that's running on both machines on the thinning layer okay. and test it and make sure nothing's going to crash or nothing's going to, and it will tell us that you're going to That's So it's uh, very quick, probably about maybe two minutes for a pretty complex part to actually go through all the features and actually go around all the features. It's amazing. It is amazing. I've been looking for this for a long time. Well, it's been on the market. It's only been on the market probably for about months. Yeah. So obviously it's been working on a long time. On a lot of other feature recognition software, sure. trying to get that for our customers. And this first thing really ties the machine to it. So there's no bus processor worrying out. None of the it interfaces directly to the machine. So it's very, very good. Ask, yeah. Imagine they just know themselves, really. Who wants to get to work? We had just that going yeah. in here. Oh, well, I mean, it's bubbly. They don't run like that, like, but it's pretty cool. No, we're just scratching the surface on it, buddy. What application the use case do you see coming up here in the next half year, 18 months to technology? Our area is like to be. No. Stuff, so that the next really tough call. Right. So we're actually with some of our horizontal machining centers now, we're holding plus or minus three microns on the end, really million microns, which is pretty amazing. And it, so the machines are getting tighter and tighter. And I, I can't believe we can hold those calls. Obviously, there has to be temperature control and Coolant has to be killed and all these kind of things, but we're doing it. And then pretty amazing work that uh, it's really hard to bring over animals of innovation from the peer and try to get it to us as quick as that here. This doesn't travel very well. No, that's for that's what my job is. Hey, there, the Are there any mega trends that you think you spoke about today? You think we're trying to bring that knowledge over? I get traded out there. Are you, are you anything that the audience should be aware of? It's automation. And that's maybe a different form. It comes in forms of a politics system where you're automating more as all the hunting form. Uh, on one machine, we put it's actually a nine axis leg where we put on a bar feeder and a gantry load. So we can actually load gloves or we can load balls. And then it's a nine axis. So we can make anything we really want to. Uh, I've clearly all the gigs, so it's that's one of our, one of our star machines for uh, high production. And they're doing their you know, automation with the robot, getting to be where it's very easy to program now, very easy to actually, the interface is the only tough part, and that's what we do, what we do it. But MASAC has made it very easy for us to do that. Automation comes already with the machine. What advice would you give to businesses that maybe are not aware of automation, but are just now getting their toe in? Losing their way in way if I if you really gotta look at it really hard and really look at art the whole pitch. You know, there's a reason why robots have a bad name. People get them and think they're gonna do all the work for them. No, that's not the case. You have to make sure that you're the one that's that's running it. Now we can do short runs now and they make it so much better. You can program it so much easier you now. Interface, we can move them from machine to machine. They're cobots, so you can work all around them. There's so many features now that really work well. So now is the time, really, to automate. Even if you have a 20-piece run, then you can have your guy to run. That machine's running the parts once it gets it set up. Then that guy has, so he has ownership. The guys in the board love that ownership. You don't want to be a button. Well, they want the ownership. When you hear your seat, you see it. And they get the ownership of it, and then they can fight, and then they make it work. Then that guy can go to the next machine, send it for you. This will run their product, right? So that's really what 
the horizontals and the pilot tech systems are the way to go if you do have a band. Set up a lot of jobs in it, and then have them all coming up. Then you got a guy coming in on the weekends, loading and unloading blanks, parts, and you got running plum post out here. We got machines that are running 24 7 on horizontals on cell systems. The yeah. end uh, high RPM spindles, and they can run it for years without a problem. Wow. Ah, very good, reliable. Very good. Now we got the service on screen now. Yeah. So we got good service in the area because it's us. So we've given you a lot of business. Very good. Thank you. Here at Tech Odyssey, Austin, just share a little bit about yourself and how you joined CNC. Uh, I have a degree in computer engineering and systems from University of Washington. Cool. And I have been in handful devices for quite a number of years. And this job in the perfect opportunity to more that space and to learn more about robotic automation. Awesome. That's a passion of yours. Yes. And I can tell. Yes. Awesome. And then, uh, can you share a bit about how camp is able to help you achieve and, and realize that passion? Yes, I was uh, very impressed with building while I'm, you know, to board um, the uh, focus on free job. Great place to find a lot of jobs in this industry and then up with a situation, which is really perfect for me. Awesome. Let's move on to this right here. Uh, I've got a sweet tooth. Not here. This right here is going to serve this morning. Yeah. But there have been about what we're looking at here. Yeah. So this. Is the fan of collaborative robots robot? We had a number of three options here ice cream, make clubs, sort of things. Make the selection for what we want. I'm going to choose ice cream. But yeah, good choice. We that then tell it to you. Okay, we go. Retrieve the club. Place it in the receptacle. Dispense the ice cream. You did all the programming for this? Well, yeah, it was a team effort between myself and Jay Johnson. Mm -hmm. We uh, worked hard to get this display ready for him. Awesome. Awesome. We really appreciate it. Yep. I'm going to you dig in the fire. Okay. Thank you. Going with Theo. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got here in front of us? We got our new linear high gauge. We've had this model for a while, and this is a brand new display for us. Kind of game changer, makes measuring very easy for the operator. A lot of times with these linear hackers, the head gauges that have more functionality, it can be tough to navigate through the menu to get the measurements that you need. This guides you through. Let's pick this diameter right there. The probe inside. We're press that one right there. Okay. That's what's happening. It went down. It's ready for complete. Keep going. Going up. I'll see you again. Yeah. Nice. We're pretty good about that. And what precision can this get down? I got all the zeros. See a lot of zeros on them. Yeah, I'm all there. I have to go down. But where you are, out to point one micron. If I go to the number of That's amazing. It's pretty amazing. I mean, what type of customers typically would utilize the machine? Aerospace company. Yeah. Uh, this will be going in their quality lab. Um, they got lots of things they got to verify. Maybe they've been checking these with caliper or micrometer uh, out on the shop floor all day. They want to bring a couple in to check see how, how we're really doing. So if I go here, do a run out. Sure, we're getting like to flat, verify all the measurements that they're taking out on the shop are, are good. We make sure that we're, we're being okay. Quite a bit of run out on the park, but we didn't make one. And again, the a bit on the floor we're looking at. Three out for this run out, the highest point that it found, lowest point, and that's the difference. But uh, I'm going to do another sort of goal. Is that it? No, I'm going to try. Right. It's all real time. So that's the distance from the granite in the center of the hole. Got our diameter right there. And this is the distance between the center of this hole and the feature that we measured last. Three alpha curve. We got everything. Here's the whole thing. Hand tools is what we're known for, micrometers and calipers. Uh, 
but we're still over here. There's one forking that I'm representing. We do CMMs, camera-based measurement systems, profilometers, optical comparators, microscopes, hardness testers. And it... So you mentioned that this is a, a new display. And um, what kind of technology have you seen coming in to your tools? We've always had the accuracy. We've always had the robustness. The beam quality has been there. We're trying to make it more accessible for our we want, to, we want everybody to be able to walk up and take the measurements that they need. And we don't want it. We don't want there to be a barrier. That's wonderful. I love accessibility and reducing the barriers of you know, entry. How have you guys been doing that? Opening doors to more customers to use this technology. We talked about doing it for a long time. You're, you talk to our tool technology. Well, you can get this with or without a buzzer. This was a game changer for the blind community. Because you go in, measure their part. They don't need to read and write anything down. They press this button there and it's right. So we did a long time ago, I think in the 80s or 70s. Yeah, we're always looking to make our, our software easier to use and still keep the functionality because customers are doing complicated things. They're trying to date them, feature all over the place, doing three stuff. You need that capability. So, how do you keep that capability and make it a little easier for the newer operators? And that's wonderful. We're always trying to do it. That's great. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit of what we're looking at? So uh, Walter is the German cutting tool company. Full line of tooling, everything from end mills to drills, turning tools. We're probably best known for our drill. That's typically what I would lead, lead with going into a customer. But some of the newer developments in Walter Weisberg, Melody, how do you do it? Ah. So we're very excited to have an expanded offering of end mills for every material imagine. Similar offering for turning, you can do it all as far as turning and drilling. So that's probably what I'm most excited about right now is our end mills. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what what any cutting tool salesman really wants to sell is our indexable tools. As you can see. This tool is just completely loaded with pincer. Very good tool for aggressive machining and gaining. But that's about it. It's been awesome. It's mine. I've been doing this. I've been probably 20 years in a machine. Oh, yeah. And I started selling tears ago. Been really excited to have an opportunity to come work love officer because of their room. Now, we, we saw the machine cutting over here at CNC, the CNC machine with Mazak machine and Alter Tool. Yeah. And it was cutting some pretty tough metal. It was doing some pretty intricate work. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so what can you tell us about the tool that, that was doing that cutting? It's actually our 51 face mill. Oh, okay. This is an update we've made from an older style mill. Oh. We actually changed that angle. That insert is held in that bucket. And what that does is allow us that more carbide behind the cutting edge. So it's a much more durable. Wow. So if you saw and heard. It was impressive. It, yeah. Or it, and then very real. And, and I'm looking more durable with the state it is. So first, we, we're seeing 20% of wow. in tool life just because of the geometry. So it pays to stay up to date on tooling. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She has to be custom to pay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you very much, Ryan. Yeah, very nice meeting you, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for stopping by our group. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm joined by Tony Carroll. That's the class 12. He's the WTO. Why don't you share a bit from how we to know the WTO is? And what we are a static and German tool holder company for late and turning centers, Swiss type machines, things like that. So we have are some German tool holders here. Uh, these are my standard line where we have quick change capability. So you go from using your little wrench there to secure your spindle, you go from ER collets to my quick change. Like that. Just like that. Now you've got a shell mill arbor. Now you want to go to a side lock holder, and now you've got a side lock holder. So it gives you some modularity without making the investment of some of the quick change systems that are out there, or, which are great systems. Their expense doesn't make sense for everybody to make any kind of investment. So this is the good middle of the road for you. What are some good applications for this? Mill on a lathe in a turning center. So mill turns right now, it's about knocking out work in one job instead in one machine rather than jumping from assuming the machine in the mill to a lathe, that, whatever, or to the broaching machine or to the gear hog machine. So we offer broaching unit, we offer the gear hog, 
power sky, variety of stuff so that you can do as much as you can with your turret uh, late machine. Optimizing your joints, multiple holders. If you've got you know, one station, I could put four turrets already. It's about maximizing that space, increasing uptime, increasing downtime, and being able to knock stuff out in an obligation. Wow. Great. And there's that left hand away. Right, that's the leader. So, what was this tool you were mentioning over here? Broaching unit right here. I've heard a lot of doubt the mission. Yeah, I more about the I, I love the broaching unit because it's bulletproof. It, it's literally one of the best in the business, probably the best in the business. Okay. Because it's enclosed. So, you don't have anything open where chips or debris will be given there in the governor level situation. What this does is the same mechanism that powers your live tool. It's, there's a tang in here, and this reciprocates in and out. Whoa. So it, it, create, it can create broach features such as key waves, slides on the OD or the ID, depending on how you orient the little cutting tool here. So it's really nice because it dips out of the cut. I was giving you an example here where we go in and one degree draw. Well, I was not just doing this motion, dragging across the back. When you flip it over and do OD, you the follow and does this. It's a really awesome technology in the sense that you can do spines without investing in the auction on the machine. Because if you want to run a gear hob or a power diver, you need the auction to synchronize the spinning door, which can get very expensive. But if you have the work for it, it'll pay for itself. Right. But if you only have a few oddball, yeah, I need to do it in here, I maybe need to do some spines here. This is a multi-use tool that can do them. Because you don't need the auction. Yeah, multi-use, reducing the footprint. Minimizing and I handling directory. Where do you see this industry going in the next, let's say, this is five, 20, 15 years? That's a loaded question. <laughs> there's a, well, there's a lot of like new additive type receivers. We'll go, oh, the machine is going to go away. But when the additive receivers aren't there yet, they're, they can make a solid, but as far as main features and things like that, you still need a machine and clean up some of the things, some of the forging and things like that. There's still some stuff you need to do so. Machining is still going strong. I've been in this industry now my, like, my entire life. I do it for my dad's show. And I was a programmer for 10 years before I got it. I've been in sales now 14 years. And I've said everything from putty tools, uh, driven tools, accessories, bar feeders, things. And more strong. You're still, we still need parts. We still have aerospace defense. Satellites, firearms, every industry is not a draw. And even those that are maybe a little leveled off right now, we're still seeing light into the tunnel to go. Still seeing stuff to go. Now, thank you. Thank you. Well, Cody, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you.